All right, welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Bar Silence. My name is Jameson, and I'm your host. Bar Silence is a show that's dedicated to exploring the very best video game music from past and present each and every month. If you haven't yet, head over to barsilence.com to find an easy link to subscribe on whatever your favorite podcatcher is. And if you're looking for the best 24-7 video game music radio station on the planet, check out 8 Beats Radio. This show plays there live on the first Tuesday of every month, and you can tune in by going to 8beats.co. You can also listen to this show on terraplayer.com, which is the premier location to hear a great variety of video game music and entertainment podcasts from some of the best creators on the internet. In this episode, we're going to be listening to something a little bit different this time. Instead of a soundtrack to a specific game, we're actually going to be listening to the music of the Nintendo Wii console. The idea of a soundtrack that plays within the system itself is definitely becoming a relic of the past, but it's also one of those classic examples of Nintendo's hyper level of detail and care that they put into crafting a fun experience for gamers. When looking back at the system, the Wii actually marks an interesting reset point for Nintendo as they were forced to reconsider who they were in the market and what the meaning of their efforts would become. And there's a reason for that too. Shortly after the release of the Nintendo GameCube in 2001, Nintendo began developing their next console. And, unlike their peers, Nintendo decided, somewhat controversially, not to focus on the graphics and power of the hardware, and instead focus their efforts on creating unique and interesting gameplay concepts. The choice for industry veteran Nintendo to refocus this energy against its hot-selling and much larger corporate competition was a huge risk, too. Because at the time, the GameCube was definitely not selling anywhere near as well as Sony's Titan PlayStation 2, and was starting to fall behind Microsoft's new system, the original Xbox. In the face of this battle for gamers' attention, all three systems arguably felt very samey, offering only minor differences between what the three of them could produce graphically. But when Satoru Iwata became president of Nintendo in 2002, he recognized that Nintendo was starting to fall behind in not only how their current system was performing, but also in terms of variety of games that were being released. In the gaming media world, Nintendo was noted for ignoring the potential of online gaming, and Nintendo themselves even felt that gaming was becoming too exclusive from larger audiences by focusing on increasingly complex gameplay styles and genres that were not really broad-reaching in terms of demographics. Iwata's approach for this new console was to make hardware and software that could appeal to all people, thus defining Nintendo's play separately from the competition, and placing them as an innovator and experience maker that they're still championed for even today. In 2003, Shigeru Miyamoto was tasked with going off the tech roadmap and spearheading development of a new type of controller that utilized motion sensing technology, focusing on simplifying the gaming interface and making it approachable to many more people. Within just six months, the first prototypes were developed and by early 2004, Nintendo was starting to reveal some details of their upcoming console, which was referred to by its codename, Revolution. This excitingly named and interesting concept that Nintendo was working on wasn't showcased until the E3 Expo in 2005. Here, Nintendo revealed that they had a new control system in mind, and that this system was going to be able to play all GameCube games thanks to it having four of that system's controller ports and two memory card slots on top. Additionally, they introduced their secret weapon, which later evolved into the Virtual Console. This innovative idea would make the Wii a super backwards compatible system that would provide gamers access to Nintendo's extensive library spanning back to the NES era. It wasn't until E3 a year later when Nintendo first announced the name, Wii which of course was met with jokes and various forms of crude humor online. The meaning of the system's name though actually comes from the word Wii, as in multiple people, and it was meant to represent that this system was for everyone. And it was. The Nintendo Wii was released at $250, making it not only more affordable than the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, it also came with the added benefit of a pack and game that excellently gave owners a demo into what the system could do with Wii Sports. But let's get back to the music and talk about the songs we're going to hear in our next block. First up is going to be one of the most iconic set of tunes from the Mii channel. This music should immediately be recognizable to anyone who's ever created a Mii character. I've mixed together the version of the Mii channel song that plays while you're creating your character, which then will flow right into the parade version that plays when all of your Mii's would march together on screen. Then after that, we'll listen to four songs from the Check Me Out channel. This channel allowed players to share their Mii's and enter them into popularity contests for others around the world to see. This was also an excellent location to see the often strange collection of lookalike celebrities, grotesque monsters, and recreations of other pop culture characters, as well as anything else that the creative minds of gamers could come up with. For this set, we're going to listen to Main Menu, then Contest Menu, followed by Contest Winner Parade, and then we'll hear the Submission Plaza Parade version. After that, we're going to listen to a few songs from the Everybody Votes channel. 
I would regularly tune into this channel just to see the weird opinion polls that were being asked. I used to love seeing either how far off my answers were from everyone else's, or just how close I could actually get by trying to guess the most popular one. For this set, we're going to hear three tracks called The Results Are In, Answering the Question, and Vote Results. After that, we'll listen to the Transfer Tool menu song that comes from the Wii U Transfer Tool channel. This soothing track plays while you wait for your content to be sent over to your shiny new Wii U, if you were one of the people that had one. Last for this block, we're going to listen to a couple of songs from the photo channel that allowed users to insert their SD cards into the console and look at their photos and videos on the TV. There was a built-in editor, slideshow maker, and a variety of other options including puzzles that you could solve that were made from your photos. We'll hear the dreamy photo list song, then finish our block with the atmospheric jam called slideshow, Scenic. Alright, let's waggle our Wii Motes through these tunes and I'll be back after that to talk a little bit more about the Nintendo Wii.
the Nintendo Wii main user interface was controlled by using the Wii Mote and pointing it at your TV screen. With an on-screen cursor like a mouse, you could select through menus to pick different applications that Nintendo referred to as channels. The interface and operating system of the Nintendo Wii was really unique compared to its peers at the time, and, notably, was given the care equal to, or at least just as important as the games themselves were. So much so, that the incredibly relaxing and at times upbeat tunes that play while you navigate your way through different parts of the user interface all had music of its own, giving each area within the console its own feeling and making even the non-games feel fun. The channel system for the Wii was interesting too, because when the system was released in 2006, it came out just a few months before Apple first revealed the iPhone to the world. At the time, the idea of tiling applications in a grid on screen wasn't especially common. So seeing that Nintendo was able to develop a forward-thinking solution to their interface that maximized the user experience with their new controllers is something that should definitely be praiseworthy in retrospect. Now, another thing that's interesting about the channel system is that across all regions, the Wii had over 30 different channels that you could download and use that were made by Nintendo. The standard channels built into the Wii included the disc channel for your games, channels for Miis like the main Mii channel as well as Check Me Out, and there were also channels for photos, the weather, the news, as well as interactive fun like the Everybody Votes channel, Wii Speak, and one for searching the internet. Of course, there were also channels for games like the Wii Shop channel and the Virtual Console, as well as what was known as WiiWare, which was Nintendo's version of the Xbox Live Arcade for smaller launches of indie games designed specifically for the Wii. There were also channels that were exclusive to Japan like the Digicam Print channel for printing photos, We Know Ma, which featured celebrity Mii's and special programming that took place in a virtual living room, and the Food Delivery channel, which allowed users to order food online that would then be delivered to them DoorDash style four years before that was even invented. There were even channels for streaming video on the Wii, which was becoming increasingly popular during the system's lifetime. There were channels for Hulu, Netflix, Crunchyroll, and even a version of the BBC iPlayer. All of these channels really gave Nintendo a sense of being the little system that could, in the sense that it was rooted in the promise of the near future. One could argue that it was a really effective way of testing out concepts that have gone on to become smart TVs and devices like the iPad for home media consumption. Now, the one thing we haven't talked about yet is who made all of these iconic songs for these channels. From what I can find online, all of the music was composed by none other than Kazumi Totaka, the mind behind soundtracks like Super Mario Land 2 on the Game Boy, Virtual Boy Wario Land, Wave Race 64, Yoshi Story, as well as having credits on the Mario Artist series, Animal Crossing, Luigi's Mansion, and Wii Sports, just to name a few. His contribution to the Nintendo Wii helped to define many of the channel's personalities, arguably burning them into the hearts and minds of gamers for generations. Totaka also has credits for voice acting characters like Yoshi, Professor E. Gad from Luigi's Mansion, Captain Alomar from Pikmin, as well as K.K. Slider from Animal Crossing. I'd say that one of his most interesting tidbits, though, is what's known as Totaka Song. It's a super short, 19-note tune that's hidden in almost every game that he's worked on. If you haven't heard it yet, it sounds like this version from Super Mario Land 2 on the Game Boy. As of right now, there are 14 versions of the song that have been found, and people are still looking for it in a handful of other games that he has credits on. It's a pretty fun VGM mystery, and I love that he had the foresight to hide something like this in his games. Anyway, let's get into our final block of tunes and talk a little bit about the music we're going to hear. Like the last block, we're going to listen to these in sets based on the channels that the songs come from. Up first, we're going to listen to the music from the Japanese-only channel called Food Delivery. We'll hear Main Theme, Ordering Party Food, Ordering All Food, Ordering Fast Food, and then Confirmation. Then after that, we'll listen to Local Forecast, Daytime, from the Forecast channel. This relaxing jam perfectly matches the experience of checking in on the weather for the week, as well as rotating a globe on screen to see what the weather was across the world. We'll follow that with the track called Speaker Room from the We Speak channel. The We Speak was a microphone accessory that launched in 2008 with its own channel, allowing users to host voice chats with each other while Mii's on screen mimic their mouth movements, which was pretty cool for a limited use accessory. Then, last in this block, we'll listen to two tracks from the Wii News channel. This channel allowed users to read headline news and even let you rotate a globe, similar to the forecast channel, to see news from all over the world. We'll listen to Global News View first, and then hear the fantastically cool and grooving slideshow daytime to end the block. Alright, let's get into some of these wee-rific tunes, and I'll be back after that.
All right, so that's the show. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this episode about the infectiously upbeat and memorable Nintendo Wii channel music. If you want to interact with the show and tell me what you think about my selections in this episode, you can follow me on a variety of social media platforms. This includes Instagram, Twitter, Threads, and Blue Sky. Following the show in those locations are exactly where you can find great screenshots, artwork, music clips, and various information about the games featured in each episode. Check the show notes to follow along on your favorite platform of choice. If you're enjoying this show's selection of incredibly great video game music each month, please consider taking a moment to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you're listening to this show, because I'd really love to hear what you think. Don't forget, you can go to barsilence.com to listen to past shows if you've missed any. And of course, if you're feeling giving, you can always support Bar Silence on Patreon. For already subscribing, I want to thank the members of the Legion of EGM for supporting the show. Zoe, Alusa, and Cameron, I truly appreciate you wee-tastic friends, and I really hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you want to join this team of cool cats and become a member of the Legion of EGM yourself, you can subscribe for as little or as much as you want, and you'll get access to a bonus episode of awesome music each month. Be sure to check the show notes for a link to learn more. I would also like to thank friends of the show, and Legion members, Aaron of the excellent video game variety podcast, Super Pod Saga, as well as Professor Tom of the Shujin Academy VGM Club. You can and should check out both of these shows wherever you find podcasts, as well as on TerraPlayer. All right, so to wrap up this show, I've got a final set of tunes for us. But you might be thinking, Jameson, why didn't you play the Wii Shop theme yet? And that might be because I wanted to save the best for last. We're going to close out this episode with the short but sweet Wii Shop channel banner, and then take us home with the beloved Wii Shop channel theme. So enjoy this final set, and as always, thanks again for listening, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.